When I was young, well, younger, I got ear infections a lot. The course of the infection would often go something like this. I would go to the doctor, and about an hour later, we would leave with a one-week supply of some antibiotic whose name I couldn't pronounce. Antibiotics are drugs that kill or inhibit bacteria. Antibiotics are also one of modern medicine's greatest triumphs. Since they were discovered nearly 80 years ago, they have greatly reduced morbidity and mortality and saved millions of lives across the globe. In my case, I would follow the doctor's instructions and take the gross-tasting medicine every day. And this continued for a few days, but after a few days, I would start to feel better. My ears didn't hurt, my fever was down, my symptoms were gone. I must be better. I could stop taking the antibiotics even though the doctor prescribed them for a full week, right? But then a few days later, I would get another ear infection, and I didn't understand why. Until now, it makes perfect sense now. It's because of this phenomenon called antibiotic resistance. The doctors gave me the antibiotics in hopes that they would kill the bacteria causing my infection in various ways, like prevent them from making a cell wall. And in these first few days, the antibiotics did just that. They killed all of the easy to kill bacteria, which we call the susceptible bacteria. But in this large a population of bacteria, some individuals are bound to have random mutations, and some of these random mutations are bound to make the individuals less sensitive to the antibiotic. So after all of the easily susceptible bacteria are gone, what's left? Well, these random mutants that will quickly spread, and soon after, I would have another ear infection. But this time, the same antibiotic would no longer work because the bacteria were already resistant to it. Here's a video showing just how quickly antibiotic resistance can occur. So what we ended up building was basically a petri dish, except that it's two feet by four feet. And the way we set it up is that there are nine bands, and at the base of each of these bands, we put a normal petri dish thick agar with different amounts of antibiotic. On the outside, there's no antibiotic. Just in from that, there's barely more than the E. coli can survive. Inside of that, there's 10 times as much, 100 times, and then finally the middle band has 1,000 times as much antibiotic. And then across the top of it, pour some thin agar that bacteria can move around in. The background is black because there's ink in it, and the bacteria appear as white. First, you see they spread in the area where there's no antibiotic, up until the point they can no longer survive. Then a mutant appears on the right. It's resistant to the antibiotic, it spreads, until it starts to compete with other mutants around it. When these mutants hit the next boundary, they too have to pause and develop new mutations to make it into 10 times as much antibiotic. And then you see the different mutants repeat this at 100. And after about 11 days, they finally make it into 1,000 times as much antibiotic as the wild type can survive. And so we can see by this process of accumulating successive mutations that bacteria, which are normally sensitive to an antibiotic, can evolve resistance to extremely high concentrations in a short period of time. We're essentially playing leapfrog with antibiotics. We discover one, and resistance comes a few years later. Penicillin was discovered in 1928. Resistance came in 1940. Tetracycline was discovered in 1948, and resistance came just five years later. As a society, we're losing our antibiotic firepower very, very fast. Running out of options for cheap and not so cheap antibiotics, the era when pneumonia or tuberculosis was a death sentence could face us once again. So in this post-antibiotic era, what will life be like? And will every disease have a version 2.0 like my ear infections did? Well, without antibiotics, surgeries and transplants will become extremely difficult, and procedures like neonatal care and chemotherapy will become tricky. Going to hospitals, it'll be more likely to get sick than to get better. And as much as this sounds like a zombie or a sci-fi movie, this could be our reality. To be able to do anything about it, we first need to understand the causes. 
The first one being ignorant kids like me not wanting to take the full course of the gross tasting medicine. But here's another cause. Most doctors understand the problem of antibiotic resistance, but somehow they're one of the major contributors to it. Doctors may know which antibiotic to prescribe, but often they don't know how much of it to use. Too, mu too little, the patient doesn't get better, so frequently they prescribe much too much. And this is fine and all, but when does it actually become too much? Well, in 2014, doctors in the United States alone wrote over 266 million prescriptions for antibiotics. That's 835 prescriptions per thousand people. Okay, that's a lot, but maybe there was just a really bad disease that spread to a bunch of people. Well, it would be nice if it were that simple. But the CDC estimates that over 30% of antibiotics prescribed are unnecessary. Most of them are for infections not even caused by bacteria, so antibiotics would be useless. My research is in improving antibiotic therapy by giving doctors an estimate for the least amount of antibiotic that they need to prescribe, especially in developing countries. The hope is that this could slow the spread of the resistant bacteria by prescribing less antibiotics. I did this by finding a correlation between a low-tech measurement that they have in developing countries and relating it to an expensive one that we have in countries like the United States. I then incorporated this correlation into a smartphone app where doctors in developing countries can enter a measurement from their test and my app will output the least concentration of the antibiotic that they need to prescribe. So this could greatly reduce uh, could greatly prolong lives in developing countries, but right now it might be worth it to take the full course of the gross tasting medicine. Just <laughs>